Okay, that's our last video. Yeah. I have nothing else to say about anything. Unless they have a podcast or some kind of... Somebody asks me, but I don't... I have nothing. Sasha Popov, he put it all... He put all the I had thing I said onto this machine. Right, that's right. Okay, oh, unplug me for the last time. Unplug. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few things that that pertain to the saga. But there I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is Jim Jim's um what I got from it in my own in my own words and not Eeyore's words. But this is just uh, over many years of thinking about the saga, I've come up with a, a few things I wanted to say in the end. And one is called the universe in a nutshell. <clears throat> there are two main theories about how this universe came into existence. The first theory is the Big Bang Theory. That one night, nothing exploded, and bingo, there were a million somethings. How can something come from nothing, and how can nothing explode? There's no logic to the Big Bang. The number two theory is the God Theory. One night, an invisible man up in the freezing vacuum of outer space somewhere just decided to make it all in six days. Where did he come from and where did he get the material to make a billion stars with? There's no logic with that one either. At best, the God theory is an abstract concept. However, the Vox Saga gave us a third option called the Eternal Universe Theory. The universe has always been, and the universe will always be. It had no beginning, and it will have no ending. The light has been forever, and the light will be forevermore. This is called eternity, or eternal, with no beginning and no ending. When one looks out into the stars, into the night sky, those beautiful stars, they go forever and ever and ever and ever with no end. And this is called infinite. The stars, the universe, there is no end to the universe, it's forever. One verse, one universe, not multiple. The universe in itself is the always. It is ever. It is the never ending. It is the eternal. And it is the infinite. It doesn't need, it does not need a creator or a creation to exist. It's always been and it will always be. And because the light is forever, life can go on forever and ever and ever. And this is the eternal universe. No beginning and no end, it's forever. And I just wanted to put that in there like that. An explanation of the universe. <clears throat> also, there's one sun, there's one moon, and there's one planet. And all those stars are made of metal, ice, and gas. They're not made of nuclear fusion or burning. They're made of three materials that reflect the light. And when the straw of the sun leaves from the sun and goes in every direction, constant, these light rays, these strollers, they go forever. The farthest star you can see out in the universe, the sun will shine past that star. 
So when does light leave the sun? This draw and throws out three light years, 15 light years, 600 light years, a thousand light years. This ray of light can come and hit one of these things we call stars made out of metal, ice, and gas. And there the light can't go through the star, so it reflects back to us here on the planet. So everything we see in the universe is a reflection of Udin, the sun. If the sun, Udin, didn't shine, the stars wouldn't shine, this earth would be completely dark and black, Mars wouldn't shine, Venus wouldn't shine, the moon, there would be no light in the universe. And the sun has always been, and the sun will always be, and the sun is not a star, and the stars are not suns. And there's absolutely no proof. They have no picture of another sun anywhere. They say they are, but they don't have it. The moon only reflects on one side. It's different than anything else. And this earth is different. In our story, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, these are stars, they're not planets. Even the Greek call them the wandering stars. They didn't call them the wandering planets. And we also, I think in almost every language, we have the word, the morning star, representing Venus. So how can it be a star and be a planet? So in our story, in the astrologi, the, as, the Asr's true logi. As means the Asr, true means to believe or faith. Ru means peace and logi means logic. The Asanur's logic and the belief of peace is what the word astrology actually means if you want to take it. So in this sense that the universe is created, the light of the universe is created by Ud and the sun, and the sun is always and it will always be. And this is an old poem about Ud in English that I learned in Finland from New York. Udin is a ring. Udin is everything. Udin has always been, and Udin will always be. And Udin is the sun. The soul is forever. And that's the universe in a nutshell. I would also like to talk a little bit about life and consciousness, which is also about the sun. The source of life, consciousness, and intelligence is the sun. If the sun didn't shine, there would be nothing alive to be conscious or intelligent. Every cell in my body and every thought in my mind is made of sun. Every color and every design on a thousand different butterflies' wings are made that way on purpose by the sun. The sun creates the light, it creates the intelligence, it creates the consciousness. So if it creates these things, it must be these things itself. The sun is alive. The sun is conscious. And the sun is very, very, very intelligent. In fact, the intelligent design that they speak about, the intelligent design of life is the sun. Without it, there is nothing alive, there's nothing conscious, there's nothing intelligent. So I just wanted to put it to the sun. And I also wanted to say that a person can live an honest and moral life, a giving, loving, caring, compassionate life without believing in the God of Abraham. But they can live no life at all without the sun. So the sun is actually more important than an abstract concept of an invisible God who made it all in six days. 
And in fact, the sun creates the day, too. And so I just wanted to say this about the sun. The sun is alive. And also the moon is conscious, too. But we'll take that another time. But this is the explanation of life, soul, intelligence. It all comes from our best friend, the sun, or Udin. We also have something in the saga called the E-Moon system. And in the story, it says that in the paradise time, before the ice, there was no sickness on the planet. We had what we call the immune system. Nobody died from being sick in the paradise. Nobody. And we also had this offering system where we had this All-Father, we call him Upko in Von language, we call him Gube in Root language, and we call him Pear in English. We're all sons and daughters of Pear. We're Pear sons, persons, Pear sons. <clears throat> and from this All-Father, from his balls, was coming the sperma to create billions of people on this planet. If you listen to the saga, it's explained. But this Papa, he gave out and he gave out. He had to receive something back because if he didn't just gave out, then he would run dry. And we couldn't let this happen to the All Father. So in the root language, it explained about how they should set up one offering system where all the men on this planet would offer their seed back up to the All Father in one offering system, a uh, military system, which Michelle explained very well. <clears throat> if I go to Africa, you have one disease called Ebola. And this Ebola is a terrible disease. It can hit a village and, and destroy half the village. But in a house where there's 10 people and five people melt, their insides melt and they die, with the Ebola, there's five people who didn't get it in the village. They're immune to Ebola. If you go to India, there's a guy there who, who can't get diphtheria. He, his whole village got it, he didn't get it, so he's immune to diphtheria. You go to South America, and there's a guy who, who can't get typhoid, typhus, because his whole village got it, but he didn't get it. So if you go around with the billions of men that are on the planet, all be immune to all the diseases that we have are there in their balls. And when they take all this and offer it up and they mix it with tour in the mixture, you create the immune system. It takes billions of men to create the immune system. It's through the offering system that we come up with this magic where we don't have disease on the planet. And this is a little bit about the immune system and how I see how it works. It's through the collection of all the men on the planet. And there you'll find the antidote to every disease in existence today. But we can't have it until we start some kind of offering system again and start to make this immune again. And that's a little bit about the immune system that really nobody spoke about. And it's really how I see it to be. I didn't hear this from Eeyore. I just want to make sure that people understand that. that it's through the years of me thinking about how could this immune system work, which brings me to this conclusion that it's a, a combination of billions of men mixing their seed together and creating the cure for all. And that's my take on the immune system. And the last thing I really wanted to say was, I get many questions about why did this planet tilt over? In the saga, it says we had three Ragnaroks, three destructions of the Asa. And this first one was when 15 million, 10,037 years ago. 
when the planet tilted and the ice age began. And why did this happen like this? What I remember the Eeyore, what we talked about, was this temple that's in Finland. It's made of gold, and everything in it's made of gold, and this massive place is plated with gold. There wasn't any more gold left to found on the surface. In the paradise, gold was laying all over the ground. They didn't have to mine it. They didn't have to blow the planet into pieces to get the gold it was laying. And so they used this gold to make this temple in Finland, this lemon kind of temple. But there came a time when there was hardly any more gold left. And also in this offering system, it says that all these billions of men were offering their seed up to the All Father. And one day, they stopped to give. And as Eeyore's called it, as he said it in the Bible, it's where they say when man turned his face away from the God. So the tilt of the axis was not from a collision from an asteroid or from, it was from man. Man stopped to offer. And the planet tilted over, and now we've been in this ice age for all this time. And this is the reason why we lost the paradise. Is man stopped? He stopped the offer to the All Father, and we'll see how that goes in the future. But anyway, I just thought that these points I really wanted to get off my head. Not they're not talked about very much. And my friend Alex has made it possible for me to do one last blah blah. <laughs> the eternal universe, what the sun really means, not only for life on earth, but what the sun actually means for all the stars and the moon. Without the sign of Uden, there's no life on the earth, and there's no stars, there's no moon, there's nothing shining. And it's really good that the sun is forever, because if it's not, if the sun is not forever, and if the universe is not forever, then we no longer need the words forever, always, never ending eternal or infinite because if there's an ending none of these words have any meaning to it we can just throw these words out from the dictionary we don't need these words anymore if the universe has an ending to it then it's not eternal it's not infinite it's not forever it's not always it's not never ending these words only work in the eternal universe theory and it's still a theory. There's no absolute proof that the universe has been here. But I find it to be much more logical than nothing exploded and bingo, there it all is. And some invisible guy just decided, hey, let's make it all in six days. You know, I mean, how long did he make the darkness that he was sitting in before he made the light? And if he made that darkness that he was sitting in before the light, what was before the darkness? And where did he come from? You can go with that. I offer $1,000 to anybody's charity on this earth. $1,000, and I have it right here, and I'm serious. I will give $1,000 to any charity you want. Not for you, but for your charity. If you can really prove to me that the God of Abraham really exists, except in your fantasy and your imagination. Send it out tomorrow. Boom, play. Where you are. Boom, boom. <laughs> so it's 13 June 2020. 
There you go, buddy. That's that's what I need to say, and you got it. And that's yeah. I tell you, we were joking when we were sitting there in Japora Village having a fucking glossy. Right. And when I ask you, what do you do? And you say, oh, I make films. <laughs> and I said, really? Yeah, yeah, I make films. And then I said, well, did you bring your camera with you? He says, I never go anywhere without my camera. Of course I have it with me. Yeah. And I said, Alex, I've been waiting for you for a long time. <laughs> and I love you, Barrett. I do. You make my life really good. Yeah, it was nice, yeah. Did you get that picture I sent you of me dressed in a yeah. brown suit? Yeah. And when I go, that'll be the picture on Facebook. That's the one I want everybody to remember me. Yeah. Well, I feel much better now. <laughs> <laughs>